All right, so in the wake of these protests that have been happening in Cuba, which are largely a result of a lack of resources, a lack of medical supplies, especially during the pandemic surge that they have been seeing recently, um, which are themselves largely due to uh, the U.S. embargo and sanctions that we have been leveling against the country for decades and decades and decades, um, Joe Biden has decided that not only will he not listen to the rest of the international community and drop this crippling embargo, but instead he's going to be doing this. So Joe Biden to announce sanctions on Cuban officials. This is huge, said Sasha Tirador, a top Miami uh, political operative who was briefed on the plans Wednesday night. So this entire article that was written here, I'm going to throw it down in the description below if you want to go read it. Uh, not sure if you would actually want to because it's really just emblematic of how the media has been talking about uh, this issue from uh, the beginning of these protests. It's been completely skewed in a right-wing direction. Basically, uh, the entire media, conservatives and Democrats alike, uh, are basically just going with whatever the word is of the most uh, freakish conservative uh, Cuban Americans that they can go and find down in Miami and then reporting their opinions on these things as if they are representative of the entirety of the Cuban population or as if uh, they are truth and gospel. And that's exactly how this article was written um, as well. So let's go ahead and read some of the details here. So President Joe Biden on Thursday plans to slap targeted individual sanctions on Cuba regime officials bucking the progressive voices in his own party who called for an end to the embargo. So first of all, when they say targeted individual sanctions, okay, we've seen this before, right? They can say that it's it's targeted all they want, but we know the history of this. I mean, U.S. sanctions on Venezuela, which Trump's administration also called targeted, U.S. sanctions on Venezuela responsible for tens of thousands of deaths, claimed new report. And this was just from 2018, so or 2019, so who knows how many deaths have been uh, uh, continued in the interim period since then. But, I mean, whenever they say targeted uh, sanctions, that's what they mean, okay? They really mean sanctions that will inevitably bring about consequences for the people of those countries most of the time. Uh, we have another example here from directly from the mouth of Mike Pompeo. Mike Pompeo says, says Iran must listen to the U.S. if they want their people to eat. Okay, so basically, this is the contradiction that we're facing right here. When they say they're going to be leveling targeted sanctions, and they also call these Iranian sanctions targeted sanctions, this is what they mean, okay? We're trying to leverage our power economically. We're trying to leverage our power militarily um, in order to extract concessions. And in this case, uh, with the Cuban government, the concession is we want the overthrow of the current government of Cuba to install one that will be uh, more deferential towards U.S. corporate interests. That's the uh, actual dynamic that we have right now. And in addition to that, when they say bucking the progressive voices in his own party who called for an end to the embargo, it's not just progressive voices, right? And this is how they skew this entire conversation in the right-winning right uh, leaning direction, is this is not just some progressives who are like radical lefty socialists who are calling for an end to the embargo, it's literally the entire rest of the international community, okay? So not only are we backed by, you know, morality and actual questions of what makes sense uh, to benefit the human uh, Cuban people, if Joe Biden, you know, comes out and he says that he cares about improving the living standards of the Cuban people, this is what the international community is telling you to do, okay? So the vote uh, recently, U.S. votes against U.N. resolution condemning U.S. embargo on Cuba. So it's mostly a symbolic vote. It doesn't actually carry any weight, obviously, because who's going to be enforcing the United States to actually follow through on this? But the vote was clear, 184 to 2 in favor of getting rid of the embargo. So again, the entire rest of the international community is uniformly understanding the dynamic that is going on right now. And yet Joe Biden decides instead, nah, I'm not going to get rid of the embargo. I'm not going to get rid of the Trump sanctions, the over like 200 sanctions that Trump uh, added to uh, Cuba. But in addition to that, I'm going to slap more sanctions on. So let's go ahead and read, uh, continuing how they are covering this in this article. So the conservative criticism of Biden, nowhere in this piece, by the way, do they give even remotely a progressive criticism of the embargo, the results of it, none of it. They don't give any of the details as to the consequences that that have caused, which, uh, by the way, like in my recent videos, I talked about this as well, but their estimates that it has costed over the years, the Cuban government, $130 billion. Okay, so yeah, what do you think is going to happen to an economy? What do you think is going to happen to a, a people uh, when you strangle them like that? So uh, that's the reality that they don't talk about in this, but they, of course, of course, give conservative criticism. So they say the conservative criticism of Biden's Cuba response has escalated significantly in recent days with several high-profile commentators, congressional lawmakers, and 2024 Republican White House hopefuls using the unrest to hammer the administration's foreign policy, all while gal galvanizing the GOP around anti-communist themes. So that is true, but it also is completely disingenuous. They are using these protests, which again, were largely due to a lack of resources, a lack of medical supplies because of the embargo and the sanctions on Cuba. They're using that to justify like, oh, this is a, a 
massive people's uprising against the entire government of Cuba or against socialism and communism in general. It's, it's a ridiculous narrative that they're putting out there, and yet in this piece, nowhere do they mention that or give any of the actual uh, uh, arguments that can be used against that. Nowhere do they talk about that. They just say, oh yeah, this is galvanizing anti-communist rhetoric, and they continue. Around the same time that Miami Democrats were briefed, Fox News' Sean Hannity came to Miami's Little Havana neighborhood and devoted his hour-long week weeknight show entirely to Cuba pro, Cuba's protests, hosting the program live from Cali Ocho and featuring guests that included Rubio, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, and Representative Maria Salazar. Accusing the president of great cowardice, Hannity asked at one point in the broadcast, what is the Biden doctrine? To kiss the ass of every single solitary dictator in the world? First of all, it's ironic coming from somebody who supported the Donald Trump administration who also supported many dictators around the world. And yes, uh, Joe Biden is kissing the ass of plenty of authoritarians and dictators around the world, but none of those asses happen to be the Castros, okay? None of those asses happen to be any of the officials within the Cuban government or the Cuban government itself, okay? Jo they, they continue this narrative that is totally ridiculous, that Joe Biden is some sort of radical communist or a radical socialist or that he's being uh, controlled by socialists. Meanwhile, he's going out and doing shit like this. Again, he's maintaining the Trump sanctions. He's maintaining the embargo. This is a position that is even to the right of Obama on foreign policy, okay? Obama, who, uh, you know, was trying to semi-normalize relationships with Cuba, uh, which would have been a good thing. Biden is going completely in the opposite direction, and it's really even leaning to the right of Donald Trump on this issue by slapping down even more sanctions on the country. So this is a situation that we have right now. Uh, it's a completely ridiculous dynamic. If Joe Biden or any of the Democrats actually cared about fixing the situation in Cuba with their economy, with their uh, struggles that they've had recently in handling the pandemic and not having enough equipment and resources necessary to do so, then they would end the embargo and drop the sanctions so that they can get access to those adequate... Uh, resources necessary in order to handle the situation. So uh, this is where Joe Biden's at right now, okay? He's completely giving deference to the Marco Rubios and Sean Hannity's of the world. He's bowing down to these conservatives who are completely arguing in bad faith and uh, seek to do nothing other than overthrow the government of Cuba.